Hi, I'm Ellie Westbrook, and I'm presenting American Ginseng. So American Ginseng, it's a perennial herb. It's native to deciduous forests in the U.S. It has a distinctive white taproot. The white taproot is what sells on the market. Um, on the left, you can see the wild range for American Ginseng. It generally goes along the Appalachian Mountain Range and all the way down to almost to the, uh, the southern coast. Uh, it extends into the Midwest a little bit, and uh, the primary location for growing ginseng is actually in Wisconsin. Um, and despite this being a domesticated crop since the 1800s, uh, it's been over harvested, especially in the 70s, and it's changed its uh, status to an endangered species. Um, the endangered species status is a result of over poaching. So American ginseng is an extremely hard crop to grow. It's very fussy. Uh, it requires a lot of time, energy, and money. Um, so most people just say screw it and it's easier to poach the crop. So early Chinese emperors thought it to be a panacea to ingest or to be used in soaps and lotions. Um, and the species that's used in Asia, it's actually just called Panax ginseng. Uh, Panax just means universal remedy. Uh, ginseng also just, it means the image of a man. And this is because ginseng roots are shaped like the body of a person. Uh, and this is said uh, that this quality drives up the price of the crop. Um, in Minnesota, ginseng was one of the first major exports. 120 tons of dried ginseng were shipped to China in the 1860s. Um, and this is just because it's very similar to Asian ginseng. Um, but Panax ginseng has been harvested in China for over 3,000 years. Um, and historically also, Native Americans use ginseng remedies and remedies and cultural practices very often. So Wisconsin was the first to cultivate American ginseng. So in 1904, um, farmers transplanted 100 wild ginseng plants from nearby forests to their own land. Um, and then they carefully replicated the same conditions that were in the forest. Um, so now Wisconsin is the ginseng capital of the United States. 10% um, of the world's supply and 95% of the United States supply of ginseng comes from one single county, county in Wisconsin called Marathon County. Um, and ginseng is a very profitable crop. Um, farmers earn $70 million in Marathon County alone. but this doesn't take into the fact of how much money ginseng requires. Um, I'll get more into that later on. Farmers generally grow ginseng from seeds, and they rarely propagate them because this is known to be a little bit of a harder method. Um, planting time is in the fall. They usually cover it with mulch until spring so it can retain some of the moisture. Um, and the roots can be transplanted at any time after the tops of the plants have died back, uh, except for when the ground is frozen. And they typically want to do this when they get big enough that you want to uh, put more space in between the crops. I'll get to that in a moment. The germination time is in the early spring, and usually the mature plants are only get to be two feet tall. Um, and it usually has the leaves form in threes, and each have five ovate leaflet, leaflets. So the growth patterns for American ginseng goes as follows. The first year seedlings produce one compound leaf with three leaflets. Sorry, it's a typo. Um, this is only the above ground growth in the first year. There's no root formation yet. Um, and it's also known that there's an 18 month dormancy period and then also the seeds must be stratified for an 18 to 22, month, uh, 18 to 22 months after planting. Um, so the American ginseng plant, uh, the seeds over winter need to be exposed to cold temperatures for at least a season before they can be able to germinate. Um, this period of dormancy can last for one or more seasons and therefore it's in a farmer's best interest to always purchase uh, stratified seeds from reputable, reputable seed sources. Um, but if not, seed stratification just involves uh, soaking the seed in formaldehyde solution and in a fungicide and then burying the seed outdoors in moist sand. Um, most of the seeds are already stratified when it's purchased and it only needs to be treated with fungicide and then sown. Um, and then also it's important to remember that seeds should not be allowed to dry out before seeding. And then um, in the second and third years, that's when the root develops. 
um, usually only grows to one inch long, a quarter inch thick. A uh, small rhizome, it's called the neck, it develops with a regeneration bud at the apex of the rhizome. Um, and then in third year plants, um, that's when they become the marketable size, which is usually from three to ten, three to eight inches long, a uh, quarter to one inch thick roots. So, And then in the fall, the leaf drops and a stem supporting new leaves emerges from the regeneration bud in the next spring. So the fourth and fifth year plants develop much more leaves and leaflets. Um, mature fruit is a pea-sized little, little berry. It looks very similar to rosary bees, uh, rosary peas. Um, usually in July the flowers bloom and those are green and yellow cluster flowers. American ginseng generally just really loves the shade. So they prefer 70 to 90 percent natural or artificial shade. Um, polypropylene fabric can be placed seven feet above the ground, uh, but you can't use burlap or muslin because it interferes with the air circulation, which is extremely important to the growth of the plant. Um, rainfall is usually 40 to 50 inches on average. Um, temperature is usually 50 degrees. Um, I couldn't find what temperature is for the winter season, but it says several weeks of cold temperatures are needed for dormancy. Um, but I couldn't find the exact temperature. Um, no improved varieties have been developed for ginseng, so climate is what ultimately changes the characteristics. Uh, northern, uh, northern states produce the most highest quality ginseng, though. So American ginseng generally grows really well in the same conditions as wild American ginseng does. Um, prefers loamy, deep, at least a foot deep, uh, of well-drained soil. Um, high organic content is recommended. This replicates the same uh, layer of peat that's usually in the forest. pH around 5.5. Um, sandy soils can produce long, slender, and undesirable roots, um, but mixing a one-to-one -one ratio of fiber-free woodland soil creates quality seedbed soil. Seed bed soil, geez. Uh, when cultivating on a flat ground, mounding the center of the seedbed facilitates runoff. So, obviously, um, soil drainage is very important for this plant. Preparing the seedbed for American ginseng is probably the most complicated part of the process. So, for seeds, um, till the soil down 8 to 10 inches. For roots, it needs to be a foot deep. Um, and while you're doing this, you need to make sure that you remove rocks along the way. Uh, the beds should be four feet wide with space in between for farming equipment and also it's very important that you provide the shade as mentioned before. Um, seedlings should be planted an eighth of an inch to a half an inch deep. Uh, they need to be four inches apart um, and then the rows should be spaced six inches apart. Uh, this generally produces 90 pounds an acre. Uh, two to three inches of straw are recommended to cover the bed so the seeds stay hydrated. Um, and which is a general theme throughout the entire farming process is, process is just trying to keep this plant hydrated at all times. Um, and then for root planting, they need to be planted at an angle um, with the crown at least an inch deep. Um, and again, one to two inches of straw is recommended on top to retain moisture. Um, and then the last step is probably the easiest part, a four to five inch layer of mulch. Um, this prevents frost during the winter months and some of the mulch can be removed in the spring to allow for the first shoots to appear. Um, and then if you set the seedlings eight inches apart in each direction, this prevents diseases. So any kind of uh, nutrition or fertilizer requirements, it needs to be applied during the dormant season. Um, manure and commercial fertilizers are not recommended because it reduces the um, semblance of it growing in the wild and it reduces the marketability of the product. The over manuring also forces growth too soon and it reduces the disease resistance of the plant. Um, some farmers use leaves, hardwood, sawdust, or ground up rotted wood as fertilizer. Um, and then the MPK rates for typical soil is 15 pounds for phosphorus, 60 pounds of potassium, and 20 to 60 pounds for ammonium. Um, which is generally a very large range. It really depends on the state of the soil before any sort of um, fertilizers are added. And then sometimes if the soil is a little bit too dry, they'll add ammonium sulfate instead um, as a low salt fertilizer. 
Ginseng has quite a few enemies, so they're very susceptible to fungal diseases like Alternaria leaf and stem blight, um, Phytothora root rot and foliar blight, seedling damping off caused by Pythium and Rhizoctonia, uh, rusty root, root knot nematode, and they're also uh, victim to pests like white grubs and wireworms, voles, or even like field mice. Um, and for preventing disease, they recommended adequate drainage, good air circulation, which is crucial, which is why um, the space between the plants is very important. Um, and again, uncrowded spacing, which is what I was also just saying, it prevents diseases because it reduces um, spaces between roots. And Wisconsin growers usually don't reuse a ginseng field for succeeding crops. Um, any kind of herbicide or pesticide depends on the state. Uh, Wisconsin has special permissions to use certain herbicides and fungicides for uh, the American ginseng. So another way that you can grow ginseng um, is through wild simulation. And this kind of reminded me of the way that Native Americans used to cultivate certain crops. Um, they would have certain spots in the forest that they knew that were very, uh, the conditions were exactly right for that plant, and they would just grow the plant there instead of farming it near their house. Um, and this is very similar to what this is. So ginseng grows well in established hardwood forests with deep roots. Uh, the deep roots allow for less competition for water. Um, there's also a seasonal layer of peat. Um, that acts as mulching, allows it to retain more moisture, but however, if, um, if the crop was growing on a slope, this would actually be a really good advantage because it allows for better drainage. Um, soil type is the same, loamy, well-drained, moist with high organic matter. And another important thing to remember about the slopes is that they should not be facing west or south when they're at lower uh, elevations because it would just be much too hot and dry for this plant. Harvesting and storage. So three to five year plants are mature and ready for harvest. Um, the roots dug out and they're carefully and meticulously washed of all the surface soil. Um, the natural color and the circular markings are really sought out in the high grade ginseng, so this is something that is very important that they preserve. Um, and it's also very important that when the root is being cleaned, that any of the branching forks, um, they can't be broken off because that would reduce the market value of it. Um, in a uh, heated, well-ventilated room, the ginseng is strung out over a wire, wire netting to dry out. Um, this process usually takes about six weeks. Um, it's recommended 60 to 80 degrees for the first few days so that you don't cook the plant, and then 90 days, um, 90 degrees for the next three to six weeks. Um, and it's also important to turn them. So uh, a cold, dry, rodent-proof container to store the roots is fine as well. So American ginseng uh, usually yields 150 to 250 pounds an acre, but with the market changing every single year, the price is fluctuating. Um, the profitability of the crop really depends on the state of the economy or the state of the market. Um, but typically, a well-managed field can yield a, a ton per acre, and it's reported that it's sometimes even more. Um, as I said in the beginning, ginseng requires a lot of time, patience, and effort. Uh, usually costs $20,000 an acre, 600 hours la of labor every single year, um, and then you don't even get an investment return until the third or fourth year. And then also that doesn't even include the materials which can cost $29,000 an acre. Um, and sometimes farmers say it could take them 10 years to break even, but the ginseng roots sell typically from $20 to $45 a pound. Um, in the market price right now, and then the seeds for $50 to $100 a pound. So ginseng grown in the U.S. is typically sold to Asian in food and health stores, and then ginseng, which is Panax ginseng grown in Asia, is shipped here. <laughs> so the markets are switched, even though it's pretty much the same price. Uh, in Asia, ginseng is used in toothpaste, soft drinks, tea, candy, chewing gum, and even cigarettes. Uh, also now, the new age market um, is selling it as an extract, powder capsules, and even in the entire group, just to use for cooking, things like that. Um, the seed is also marketed after three years. So 200 plants can produce a pound of seed, um, and that could also then produce 5,000 seedlings. 
And that is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed.